The school-to-prison pipeline is a trend in which students who receive extreme discipline in school are eventually pushed into the criminal justice system. And a Holland man using the darkness of his own past has made it his mission to keep teenagers in Ottawa County from entering it themselves. 13 on your side, Lakeshore reporter Noel Frompson has more. After. Yep. Good. Move on. In this not-so-normal class, the colonial countries of Africa and Asia, there are no desks. I get more one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. And Jim Go. is pretty much a free-for-all. Number 13. But the handful of students didn't choose this. And I was just like ashamed, disappointed in myself. Over traditional high school. I always thought it was a school for bad kids, but then like I was one of the bad kids. They're here, working. Who considers them as comrades? So they can get back. I made a simple mistake at school. My mom had got locked up and I needed extra money, so I started selling weed at school. Inside the small ministry, it doesn't matter what brought a student through the doors. There's a whole different Holland that people don't want to understand. This is going up. They're enrolled in a continued education program following suspension or expulsion from school. I'm supposed to be a freshman and now I'm doing like sophomore and junior work. With progress and a receptive school. They reviewed of how well I was doing in school and they let me go back to school like right before final exams. They can leave, living up to the name on the side of the building. If I wasn't in the school, I, I wouldn't be anywhere right now. My family was around like gang violence and I thought I was gonna be like one of the first ones to make it out of that and be something else. I don't want kids to go through the same life I had. He keeps the pictures in a box beside his desk. My father, Willie James Watt Sr., was his cousin's Larry Hoover's henchman or assassin. They both started the Black Gangster Disciples. There for Willie Watt to remember his childhood in Chicago and the reality of gang life. It is a family business. So at 11 years old, I had to make a decision to join the Black Gangster Disciples just so I can have protection from my sisters. After years of abuse and watching his friend pushed in front of an oncoming train, Watt's mother moved them to Michigan for a new start. But Willie was too far gone. I was always violent. My choice of drug was anger at the um, threatening to kill my wife and trying to commit suicide. I found myself in jail. He was homeless after his release, sleeping in a car outside Christ Memorial Church. One day he walked in asking for a prayer. A bit unusual, but uh, uh, at the same time, that's the way God works. And he never really left. They didn't care that I used to be a gang member. They didn't care that I was homeless. They cared for me to know who I was. He was on a, a part-time staff position in the church, really working with some of our uh, needy families and, and needy people in the community. Because I can do that. I mean, now a pastor himself, Willie started Escape more than a decade ago, overseeing kids with stories that felt familiar. And some of us come from parents that don't care, that don't give the right instructions, that we learn some of the most vicious things from, like I did. Watt says of the couple thousand kids that have come through Escape, more than 90% were gang affiliated or knew someone in a gang. And it's up to him and his staff to keep them out. If we're not helping these kids with their dreams, their nightmares are gonna take over. And that scares me. Something times this number. Kids will come in for after school tutoring. Am I worthless? And once a week. You know when you could have done something. They have a small round table hosted by the program director. Maybe I can be that person who stops to care. Called the Brotherhood. A group of guys that might fall through the cracks in other places. We eat together. We catch up on life. We ask something meaningful that's happened in the last week so we can grow together. And as much as they can in a beachfront city that Watt says needs to look under the surface. And we're always going to have a serious gang problem unless we put that to the front of conversation. It's a former gang member who turned his life around, who escaped, giving kids the tools they need to do the same. You can change your life. You don't have to wait till you're 40 years old like I did. We're in it for the long run. We love these kids. Sometimes it means success stories. Sometimes it just means a slow, long struggle, but we're here. Here in Holland Township, Noah Fromson, 13 on your side. And if you visit Escape Ministries, you'll see a small music studio dedicated to Troy T.J. Wells. The 14-year-old Escape student was killed in a gang shooting at a hotel last year. T.J. loved music. Watts says the studio is a reminder that not every story is a success story and why their work is so important.